Ani Wasayaban Nidijnakaz, Wabshan Shidodem, Wasaksing and Don Jaba, Toronto and Donji, Anishinaabe Nene and Dao. Uh, my English name is John and I'm a grass dancer and I'm really honored to be asked to dance for my community uh, here at this gathering. Um, I've been dancing grass for most of my adult life. I was, uh, my mom's a residential school survivor. Uh, she passed away in 2010. But one of the things that we always wanted to do together was dance together and reclaim that part of our culture. So when I moved to Toronto, uh, I met people like Steve Teakins and I met some uh, other senior dancers and I started to learn songs of the drum. And that's how I got really into dancing because um, there weren't a, many uh, dancers in my family back home in Wasoxing. So grass dancing is a really important part of my life now today. It's more than just an activity that I do like on the weekends. Uh, it's really something that I've organized pretty much my entire life around. So you'll see with my beadwork here, uh, I spend the winter months and even sometimes the summer working on different parts of my outfit. Uh, this beadwork is entirely made uh, by myself. I learned how to do beadwork back home, but I didn't know how to put together regalia pieces till I uh, started to access programming here in the city. So I'm very much uh, urban Nishinaabe and yeah, I'm really happy to be able to connect with my culture here. Uh, today, I find myself being asked to dance more and more for my community. Uh, initially, I started, like I was saying, uh, to reconnect with my mom and uh, my family and kind of that part of our culture that was impacted. But I've also realized now as a father and as an uncle and just as a dancer in the community, how, many, how much of an impact that can have and how success the way that we demonstrate our resilience as Indigenous people is by being who we are, truly. So for me, that means being a grass dancer, uh, sharing my gift of dance, and just my love of it. Uh, I really love connecting to um, the drum and the song, and yeah, just feeling good, uh, feeling mino bamadzu in that good way of life. And every weekend I get a little bit of that nurturing. Uh, sometimes it's a long trip out to the powwow, but it's always worth it in the end, and I'm really happy to be able to share, uh, yeah, share that dance style with you.
So like I was saying, my dance style is grass and when I first came to uh, wanting to learn more about that style, I went and offered sema, so tobacco, to another dancer and yeah, I didn't even know the right question to ask. I was just really interested in starting and I remember that person holding back their hand and be like, wait, what are you asking me to do? And I was like, well, I want to start to dance. I was like, could you help support me or give me guidance. So that person, uh, they did and it was a program they were running at the Native Canadian Centre uh, where I started to learn how to sew as well and from there I started to go out to more powwows. Um, my partner at the time uh, and who I came to marry, uh, Deanne, uh, we started going to more and more powwows and that grass dance I came to learn was a really important responsibility. It's about uh, protecting and providing for our community. Sometimes you'll see them, those dancers go out first. Uh, before the powwow starts, they'll sing a drum song or a grass song, and they'll invite those grass dancers out to kind of prepare the grounds. And that has two reasons. Part of it is a, a ceremony, an acknowledgement of that, taking care of that space from a spiritual standpoint. But it's also about just making sure the space is safe. So when I dance around, I'll be looking at the ground and sometimes you'll see like potholes or you'll see like big sticks on the ground or like a, a rock that would not be great to step on with your moccasin. So I'll actually go and I'll pick those things up and I'll put them to the side or if I'm out there during inner tribals. So uh, that's part of what I take as my responsibility is um, providing that safety for our community so that we can come together and dance in a good way.
So I just want to say again, Chi Mi Guech for having me share my dance style. Uh, the second song which you saw was uh, Double Beat, which is probably my favorite style to dance. And it just always, I always feel really good. Uh, kind of like the slower like momentum that builds in those songs. Um, yeah, that down beat always feels really good. And I hope that that came across with my dancing. And I just want to say uh, hi hi miigwech. My name is Deanne Hupfield and I'm from Tomogamy First Nation. Um, yeah, she miigwech to task for inviting me and my husband to come and share a dance with you. Uh, I have been powwow dancing since I was a very small girl. Um, I remember my mom taking me to my very first powwow in Thunder Bay, Ontario at the Fort William Gardens. <clears throat> And I remember holding my mom's hand walking into the arena and I could hear the drumming. And when I walked in, I could see people dancing around the drums. And I saw this one woman dancing and she was spinning and she was such a beautiful dancer. And I really, I got excited and I was like, mom, mom, I want to learn to dance. And my mom, she was like, I can't teach you that. I didn't learn that growing up. So my mom, she said, go follow behind those women and go do what they do. So me being like this tiny child, I just followed them around and copied them. I like would go and dance with just like my socks, my clothes, and I <clears throat> I always considered myself a jingle dress dancer, even though I didn't have regalia. So when I grew up, I learned that the reason why my mom couldn't teach me to dance was because my mom um, grew up in foster care, and it was later known, um, later to be known as the 60s scoop. And when I grew up more, I learned that all my grandparents and my great grandparents went to Indian residential school. So my mom, uh, she grew up with lots of trauma from that. And she passed that trauma on to me. When I was a teenage girl, I, uh, right away when I was 12, I started to struggle with addictions. And I ended up in a young offenders home. And one of the, it was open custody. So they would send us to an after school program called the New Experience Program. And it was run by um, an indigenous social worker. And he would have these big circles and he would hold a feather in his left hand and he would tell stories about how he overcame addictions through culture. And he made himself a better life. And he, he owned his own home and he was raising his family with his wife. And I never had role models like that in my life. And I was like, I want to be like this person. So I just stuck to him. And he took me under his wing with his family. And they took me on a fasting ceremony when I was 13. Um, and it was from the fasting ceremony where I got my colors and I got my, my dance style. I was, to, I was to switch to fancy shawl dancing. And it was that process of making my regalia and reconnecting to my culture it really helped me build my self-esteem and it helped me physically move through the trauma that i had experienced so he would take me to powwows in treaty three and they would whistle the drums to keep singing and i would just think about all of those crazy things i had to live through and i would just dance my hardest non-stop and i would just keep going and going and at the end of the song i would feel a little bit better so I just kept a culture <clears throat> and I was able to make a better life for myself. So I'm really grateful for this opportunity to come and share my dance with you all.
basic step is just a one, two, one, two step. So every time you hear a drum beat, beat, your feet are going to touch the ground. And one is a tap, two is your body weight. Tap, body weight, tap, body weight. And then this is the easy step that you can do on intertribals. You can go and visit with your friends, go make some new friends. And this is like the easy, low impact way to, to dance. If you wanted to make that a little harder, you can just like add a hop. So it's kind of like skipping, kind of like hopscotch. And if you wanted to create some of your own footwork, um, I was shared this, this teaching when I was like 17 years old, around 21 years ago. <laughs> and the woman, it was at the Thunderbird house in the, in Winnipeg, Manitoba. And she said to paint an imaginary box around your feet and to tap the different corners. And you can even go as far as labeling them by numbers. So like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then you can practice different combinations. So let's try uh, one, two, one, two. So just like over here and over here. And let's try it on the other side. And then to make that harder, you would add a hop. Let's try side tap. So step to the side, tap. Other side, tap. Side, tap. Other side, tap. And then adding a hop. Side, tap. Other side, tap. Side, tap. Other side, tap. And I love this one, this one's pretty easy. Crisscross. So you go out, one foot comes forward, out, other foot comes forward. Out, forward, out, forward, out, forward, out, forward. And let's try some small kicks. Small kick, small kick. I always have to tell kids, do not kick the person next to you. <laughs> kids always get silly. Uh, small kick, small kick. And then adding a hop. Small kick, small kick, small kick, small kick. And now let's try adding them together. We're going to do side tap twice on each side, followed by crisscross twice, followed by four small kicks. And watch me first and then join in. Side tap, other side tap. Criss-cross, criss-cross. Small kick, small kick. Side tap, other side tap. Criss-cross, criss-cross. Small kick, small kick. So I recommend putting some music on, trying the steps, and if you mess up, that's okay. It's about dancing from a good place in your heart. And I was always taught when I was little to always dance for those who can't dance and um, to dance with a purpose. Yeah, so me and for coming today. Uh, thank you so much. Um, if you are interested in learning more uh, dance steps, I teach powwow dancing on YouTube and my YouTube channel is how to powwow dance. Um, if you just Google that, I have like, I have like a couple of videos up on YouTube. And I also teach online regalia making at dianehubfield.com.